Do you need the power and versatility of an enterprise-grade Nook? You don't have an outlet where you need one? Stick around while we show you how to get power and gigabit data for your Nook with one Ethernet cable. Tyler Andrews here from PoE Texas, and I'm going to show you the new power over Ethernet Nook lid from PoE Texas, the GBT Nook. First, I'll explain why we call it a lid. Frankly, I was a little surprised the first time someone told me to tear the top off my Intel Nook. I had no clue the top of my Nook was designed to be removed so I could add accessories that integrate into my Nook. But thanks to the smart guys at Simply Nook, I learned how to get the most out of my Nook, and they inspired us to create the first power over Ethernet adapter in a Nook lid. Designed to install seamlessly on all Gen 7, 8, and 10 Nook models, the GBT Nook lid accepts UPoE from your Cisco switch or 802.3 BT dual signature power over Ethernet and converts it into power and data for your Nook wherever you need it. Whether you're using a Nook as a media server for displays, or an audiovisual device like an Air Server, or an Intel Unite platform, now you can install it where you need it. No outlets required. Besides the GBT Nook, you need the right kind of PoE installed. Nooks can draw a fair amount of power, so you really need an 802.3 BT or UPoE switch or injector. Yes, you can use your Cisco UPoE devices and we'll show you how to configure the port for the Nook a little later. For today, I'll use our BT1-55V60WI, which is our indoor IEEE 802.3 BT dual signature injector you can find on your favorite sales channel. This injector allows you to add IEEE 802.3 BT power to any PoE or non-PoE switch. The installation is simple and fast to accomplish. The hardest step is making sure you have the right lid model installed on your adapter. Let me show you how it's done. The form factor information is in the part number on the case. I'll show you on this Nook. I flip it over and check out the part number. Find the first I. Then the number before that is the model number you need for the lid. In this case, I have the 7. I simply need to check whether the underside lid is labeled with the same number 7 or 8. If I have the wrong lid on, no problem. Simply unscrew the board from the lid and screw it into the correct lid. Now, remove the existing lid from your Nook. I recommend you get someone with strong fingernails to help or a pusher tool like I have. Then, look for these little openings in the front and gently start pulling up. Now, the next thing to consider are these funny rubber pads. These are your thermal pads. They help manage the heat from the Nook lid. Simply place these in whichever configuration your Nook model has. Then gently place the lid on your Nook. Once it's in place, a little pressure will clip the lid on. Finally, use the included patch cable to connect the LAN port to the Ethernet port of your Nook and the DC power cable to the DC port. And you're ready to connect the power to the PoE port of your lid. Your Nook should start to boot right away. With an IEEE 802.3 BT device, you don't have to do any configuration. The PoE Nook lid will work right away. However, if you're using Windows, there's a best practice I've found I like to do. Simply type power and sleep settings in the search bar at the bottom. Select additional power settings, change power settings, Change advanced power settings. I like to go with the balance settings to keep the Nook from spiking on power. If you're using a Cisco UPoE switch, you do need to configure the port to provide 60 watts of power to your Nook lid. Prior to powering on the Nook, you need to configure any Cisco UPoE switch or pair forced PoE mode. The following steps are for the Cisco CDB8U. However, the commands remain the same any Cisco device. Only the port identifiers change. Once you've logged on to the Cisco terminal, 
And unfortunately, this is not a good place to go through all the steps to connect to a Cisco switch. However, call us if you need help. And you're at the terminal. Follow these steps to configure port 1 to 4 pair forced PoE, which will allow the switch to power the Nook lid up to 60 watts. There you have it, setting up and configuring your GBT Nook PoE lid. If you'd like more information about the PoE Nook lid, simply go to www.poetexas.com slash Nook. I'll flash up the performance specifications in case you'd like to see them here. Don't forget to like or subscribe so you can keep up with the latest on PoE Texas innovation. You can also find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Leave us comments and tell us what you'd like to see us do with the PoE Nook lid. We'll see you next time.